Well, hey everyone, welcome to Your Health Truth with today's episode. I'm your host, Brock Hardman. Today we're going to tackle caffeine. And I know it's actually one of the uh, most consumed uh, drugs on the planet. It's actually the highest psychoactive chemical that we as humans consume. And so I kind of want to go over um, what's good about it and also what's not so good about it so that people who drink things like coffee and tea understand what's actually going on uh, in their body. Because 9 out of 10 people consume caffeine on a daily basis. That's a lot of people. So it's uh, you know good to know what, what's actually going on when you consume it. So I'm going to briefly read to you uh, a little uh, an article that I wrote uh, a couple years back on caffeine and uh, what it does in your body. So, caffeine is an addictive drug. Um, among many of its actions, it operates using the same mechanisms that amphetamines, such as cocaine and heroin, use to stimulate the brain. Here's how it works. To a nerve cell... Caffeine looks like adenosine. And what adenosine is, is the first part of ATP. So if you've heard of ATP, like uh, ATP energy, it's intracellular energy, um, which, so adenosine triphosphate. So adenosine is the first part of that. So it looks like adenosine to the cell. So um, it binds to the adenosine receptors because it actually looks to the cell like it's an adenosine molecule, uh, but it's not. However, it does not slow down the cell's activity like adenosine would. So the cell cannot see adenosine anymore because caffeine is taking up all the receptors that adenosine binds to. So instead of slowing down uh, because of the adenosine level, the cells actually speed up. So now you have increased neuron firing in the brain. When that happens, the pituitary gland sees all the activity and thinks that some sort of... uh, Emergency must be occurring, so it releases hormones, uh, the stress hormones, and uh, it tells the adrenaline glands to uh, produce adrenaline and cortisol, and uh, there's a couple of others. Uh, Dopamine is one, but basically all the the, uh, stress and fight or flight hormones are produced. So um, basically your body puts itself in a state of fight or flight, like I just said. It's the same reaction as if you were to see a big black bear in the woods coming after you. So, um, a number of reactions would occur if you were to see, let's say, a big big black bear in the woods, is your pupils would dilate, your breathing tubes would expand for more oxygen intake, uh, blood pressure would rise, blood flow to the stomach slows down, your liver would then release sugar, Uh, into the bloodstream immediately for energy and uh, your muscles would tighten and you know a few other things would go on but I think you get the idea Um, but you know as you can see uh, this is probably not something that uh, the human body was designed to do on a daily basis and so um, it really also becomes an issue with people that have diabetes because what happens is when people diabetes drink coffee one of the side effects, like I said before, was your liver releases sugar into your bloodstream, which is not good for diabetics because they need to obviously control their uh, blood sugar level. Um, you know, their, or their, if their insulin and blood sugar aren't uh, at the right level, they're going to have problems. So, um, you know, cortisol is, a, is one of the hormones that's released by um, drinking coffee or tea. And... Uh, it can lead to weight gain, poor sleep, anxiety, um, you know, if you don't keep it in check. So if you, you know, continue to drink stimulants on a regular basis, um, the natural defense response of the body, like if you were to need those stress hormones in an emergency, uh, start to become exhausted, exhausted and ineffective. Uh, and your adrenal glands will be shot. I mean, I I actually friends with a guy who um, worked, worked, worked all the time, drank a lot of coffee. He did this for years and years, and finally his just, his adrenal glands were just blown out, and he has a lot of, uh, you know, allergy problems and just a lot of issues he's really having to deal with now 
to regain his health back because he blew out his adrenal glands. And so you never want to get to that point. Um, but you also don't want the hormones that your body needs for emergency situations to become ineffective. And so, um, you know, the constant secretion of these hormones are also actually highly toxic. So, um, you know, in and of themselves, the, um, these hormones are toxic to your system. And so, you know, eventually it alters the blood chemistry and causes damage to the immune system, endocrine, and nervous systems. Uh, because it's actually, caffeine's actually what it's classified as is a neurotoxin. So it's actually a toxic substance by nature. And um, so that's just, you know, one aspect of, a couple of aspects of caffeine, basically. Um, another negative aspect of caffeine deals with the removal of the substance. Some of the boost in energy experienced after drinking a cup of coffee is actually not a direct result of the caffeine it contains, but of the immune system's attempt to get rid of it. An overexcited and suppressed immune system fails to provide the energizing adrenaline and cortisol boost need to free the body from the acidic nerve toxin, caffeine. At this stage, people say that they are you know, used to the stimulant. They've gotten to the point where they need more and more of it because your body will adjust. And so uh, they tend to increase their intake to feel the benefits. And uh, what they're, you know, actually not understanding is it's not really a benefit. It's a side effect. And so, um, you know, it's just the, the body cells have to sacrifice some of their own water for the removal of the nerve toxins Regular consumption of coffee, tea, or other colas uh, cause them to become dehydrated, you know, cellular dehydration. So for every cup of coffee or tea you drink, the body has to mobilize two to three cups of water just to remove the stimulants. So that's kind of a luxury that it really can't afford. And, you know, this applies to soft drinks, uh, medicinal drugs, and any other stimulant that you consume. So as a rule... Um, all stimulants have strong dehydrating effect on bile, blood, and digestive juices. So, you know, bottom line is, you know, eliminate or reduce caffeine if at all possible. It doesn't provide really many benefits. Um, I'll get to a couple benefits here in a minute, but for the most part, it's a lot of negative side effects. Now, more and more research will tell you that caffeine is actually good for you. You know, as with most things, there's usually something good and something bad for you. So the good thing about caffeine is that it stimulates your digestive system. It increases your bowel movements. So a lot of people in the morning are used to having their cup of coffee and then uh, heading to the bathroom. It's kind of like a, a nature's calling for them. It's their daily routine to, um, you know, produce a bowel movement. But that is actually good that it produces a bowel movement. But there's better ways to produce a bowel movement. So people that are dependent on caffeine for um, going to the restroom, that's not good because you get to a point where your body is used to it and it needs that for a bowel movement. And so once you get to that point where you're drinking coffee every single day, it's harder and harder to um, stop drinking it. So I know there's a lot of people that just can't get their morning going without coffee. And I'll tell you right now, I used to be one of those people and I finally stopped drinking coffee. I started um, replacing that with other uh, habits because what you need to do is just take one bad habit, replace it with a good habit. It's really hard to stop cold turkey and I would not suggest stopping cold turkey because you'll most likely start having headaches. I would taper off of the caffeine and coffee and... Um, you know, just slowly reduce your intake to the point where you don't need it anymore. And I actually found a product yesterday uh, at Central Market where uh, a guy was telling me about a product that is actually similar to coffee, but it's actually good for you. And it contains no caffeine and no coffee beans. It, uh, it, it contains um, organic carob, organic barley, organic chicory, dates, almonds, and vanilla extract, natural flavor, and figs. And it's basically called uh, Tea Chino. And it's basically just a healthy alternative to coffee. Uh, and it tastes great. I tried some today. Uh, they have different flavors. And it's, it's in a little tea bag that you, you know, put in hot water. 
put a little sweetener in it, and it tastes just like coffee. And it's a great alternative because it's it's uh, not acidic, which means it's not acidic to your blood, uh, but it's also the opposite. It's alkaline to your blood. It contains things that uh, produce you know uh, an alkaline effect to your bloodstream. So it's kind of the opposite of coffee, and it's good for you. So if you can you know find something like that to uh, substitute for your coffee, and then find other ways to get energy. There's plenty of other ways to uh, increase your energy versus coffee because what you don't realize is you are really robbing your your system of energy by drinking coffee. It dehydrates you, it um, gives you a crash usually and uh, then your body becomes dependent on it and then it keeps you from sleeping at night because if you don't know this the half-life of caffeine for most people is six hours. So if you drink, let's say, 100 milligrams uh, in the morning of caffeine, then six hours later, there's still 50 milligrams in your system. Six hours later, there's still 25 milligrams in your system. So if you drink ca uh, coffee at 8 a.m. in the morning, 100 milligrams, by 8 p.m. that night, you still have 25 milligrams in your system. So, you know, it may keep you from uh, going to bed and getting the deep sleep that you need. And so now you don't really get a full eight hours of sleep. You really get about six good hours. And then you wake up in the morning and repeat the cycle. So, you know, you can see the problem developing there where you just, it's a continuous cycle of not enough sleep and not enough energy. And you need to break that cycle. So um, that's it. Hope uh, I've encouraged everyone to consider either reducing or eliminating their caffeine intake. Um, you know, I'll still have a cup of coffee on the weekend if I'm out having brunch. Uh, but once a week, maybe twice a week at the most, um, just really, really try to limit it as much as possible because it's just not good for you. So, hope you enjoyed today's video and uh, leave me a comment or uh, hit the like button if you liked it. And we'll talk to you tomorrow.